In the last episode, we went over how to use GTK Wave to view waveforms. Now let's talk a little bit about CocoTB coroutines. We'll be using the same example as last time. So as a reminder, this test bench ran for two clocks to run our reset logic, and then for 50 clocks to run our test bench. So if we run that in make real quick, we'll see that it still passes. And if we pull that up to view the waveform, taking our VCD file here and scrolling to the end, we see it runs from zero to 51,000 picoseconds, or 52 nanoseconds in total. What if we wanted our reset logic to run at the same time our test bench started? Or we wanted to start a function that was always doing something during every clock of our test bench? That's where coroutines come in. A coroutine is simply just a function that can be suspended or resumed. That's it. So let's take our reset logic and put it in its own function. Since this is not a test, we won't add a decorator. Call it the run reset routine, and we'll pass it our dot, and we'll just run the same logic. So every rising edge, we'll wait for two, and then we will reset the value back to zero. So we can remove this from our test. And then we'll simply start it just like we started our clock. So we'll call CocoTB.startSoon, and we'll pass it our reset coroutine. The CocoTB.startSoon method just schedules a coroutine to be run concurrently. Now let's save that and run our make file again. This failed because the coroutine behaves slightly differently than our original test. For now, let's go back to our test and comment out the assertion, just so it runs to completion. And we'll run make again. If we pull up the waveform, we'll see that this one behaves exactly like the previous waveform. The reset is held for the first two clocks, and then it runs to completion. If we scroll to the end, we see that it runs for 49,000 picoseconds, or 50 clocks in total. This differs from the previous simulation, which ran for 51,000 picoseconds, or two more clocks. So what happened here? In our previous test, when we ran the reset logic within the test bench, it was holding at each rising edge. It would run the simulator, and then come back to this for loop, and then run the simulator, and come back to this for loop until it completed this for loop. Now when we put it in its own coroutine and start it at the beginning of the simulation, it'll run concurrently on every step. So there are not two additional clocks being run. It runs for only the loop within the test bench, only 50 clocks in total. So that was a super short intro on coroutines, but I hope that clears up some information about how to run coroutines in CocoTB. Thanks.